Did you hear about the petrodollar? No. What is the petrodollar? Petro means oil, and dollar means money. So the petrodollar is oil-based money. How can money be oil-based? How long have you got? A long time. Why? Because this is going to take a while. Do you remember when America was founded? Yes. I was there. So you remember that the Constitution required that all money be gold and silver based? Yes. We did that so that no monopoly could ever be formed around the control of money. So you didn't want there to be a central bank? No. We knew that if wicked banksters ever instituted a central bank, then our people would be enslaved. So we gave that power to the states, providing that only gold and silver were to be coined as money. Well, I'm sorry to inform you, but the wicked banksters won, and the Congress created a central bank in 1913, called the Federal Reserve. Wait a minute, while I roll over in my grave. And not only did they do that, but they outlawed the ownership of gold by the American people in 1933. That is treason. Yes, and even worse, they took away the silver coins in 1964. Okay, now you are making me mad. Yes, and finally, in 1971, they took away the gold backing of the dollar for trade with other nations, when those nations demanded to exchange their gold for dollars. Well, that doesn't surprise me. If the Congress is willing to take away their own people's money by outlawing gold ownership, and taking away the silver coins, I wouldn't trust them with my money either. Exactly. So after 1971, American leaders had a problem. They had to trade with other nations, but they were running out of gold. So that's when they decided to create an empire. Based on the petrodollar. Empire. We never intended for our nation to become an empire. No, we didn't. We just wanted to be free and to peacefully trade with other nations, but instead they built an empire. But what about it makes you call it an empire? Well, how many nations are there in the world today? According to Wikipedia, there are 193 internationally recognized sovereign states. Correct. And America has military bases in 63 of those. And personnel in 156 of them. Then you are correct. America now has become a world empire. Yes, and empires are very expensive to maintain, aren't they? Yes. That is why we only provided in the Constitution for defensive wars. Because we never wanted America to become an empire. Like the British Empire we fled from. But unfortunately, they didn't listen to you, so they built a world empire. But empires are very expensive. So how can you pay for a world empire? Tribute. All historical empires have exacted tribute from the peoples they conquered. Yes. But tribute is also very hard to extract because it takes huge armies of tax collectors. And it is frequently the cause of uprisings and revolutions. So they came up with a better way to pay for the empire. What is that? They decided to force the entire world to use their fiat paper currency. And since they controlled the currency, they could just print more of it when they needed to and exact more tribute by a process of currency debasement. But if other nations see that the currency they are being forced to use is being debased, won't they just use a different currency? Yes. But what if there is an important commodity that they must have to operate their economies? And that commodity can only be purchased with the American dollar? What commodity is that? Oil, and all oil-based products. These can only be bought with American paper dollars. But how did they force all the nations to only use dollars to buy oil? Well, the first thing they did was form OPEC, which a consortium of all the major oil producing nations. And they made them all agree to only sell their oil in dollars. Why would they agree to that? Because other than having oil, most of these nations were just big piles of sand. So those nations thought that they could become filthy rich by agreeing to this agreement. I see. And they also agreed to let America put military bases there to protect all of the oil wells. So what you are telling me is that America is able to force all other nations to use their dollar to buy oil. Because they control the oil with treaties and military bases? Yes. And they are able to exact tribute to pay for that empire by forcing all other nations to use their worthless paper currency if they want to buy any oil? Yes. Doesn't this arrangement cause the nations of the world to be upset that they are forced to pay for the costs of running the American empire? 
Yes, it is but no nation really wants to be made an example of by being the first to abandon this system. Ask Saddam Hussein. But what if all the nations of the world decide at once to abandon the petrodollar system? That is what you are hearing rumblings of today. If this system collapses, America will no longer be able to pay for her expensive military and will have to shrink her empire. But won't that make the world unstable? Yes, in fact, these types of geopolitical changes usually result in wars and even world war. I see. Thank goodness we won't be around to see it because I don't think it's going to be pretty. Thank you for explaining the petrodollar. You're welcome. Goodbye.